Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. I managed to locate another module for this bank system, so I've got it plugged up on the truck here now. Try not to get in your way too much, but still show you what I got going on, so. I need to go in and set the parameters for this stuff. Everything I got hooked up. So we'll go to the menu screen. Scroll down here to Banks Modules. Select. Uh, this first one. I've got intake air. I've already programmed this one. Intake air sensor. Pressure. Temp. And I need to change this pressure because it is a not a 50, it is a 15. Now, so back. I'll go to the second channel, or second module. I haven't programmed any of these yet. So uh, 2A is intake manifold temp. So select that. Change it from voltage to well, voltage to manifold air temp. Two B is the manifold boost pressure. Pressure PSIA. It's a hundred and fifty. Doing a good job of filming nothing here for you, aren't I? Trying to block you out here now, maybe. Go back to Banks Modules. Analog 2. 2. And you change the map parameter to boost. Manifold pressure. I guess it's going to be what it's called in here. Oh, so manifold absolute. Uh, channel 2C is the drive pressure. One here. Enable. Uh, it's going to be type PSIA. to 150 map parameters exhaust manifold pressure go to a different screen Let's go to gauge selection RPM we don't need speed this thing doesn't know You can see values on here, somewhat erroneous. That's uh, because the 
sensors are not calibrated and go in and modify the values so that they read correct. The manifold air density should be 100%. And this value and this value should be the same because we're at atmospheric and there's no temperature change and it's not warm or nothing. So should all be equal, but basically within 1%, you're not going to know to within the air. I show the same intake air pressures, let's check temperatures. 355. Pressure outlets at 358. Too much. So my intake and compressor showing the same now. So I need to go fix my intake, which is showing plus 0.7. Is this up a degree? And we're close. See how that did it. Oh, still showing intake density too high, so the temperature must be off too. Or pressure. 14.92, yep, should be 14 something. Let's add a half a pound. Okay, so that's gonna wrap up this install. Uh, We've got the tack sensor hooked up. The factory Cummins tack will not work. It only produces three quarters of a volt uh, flip differential. Uh, output voltage signal, and that's not enough for the bank's module to be able to recognize the signal and count RPMs. So, since three quarters of a volt wouldn't cut it, I wound up having to use the uh, sensor they had so I had to make a new bracket which you'll never see down in there but somewhere down in there I got it mounted so hmm. cables all run protected for, so the fan blast won't chew it up they've got it somewhat armored anyway but that'll just give it a little extra layer of protection so that's exhaust manifold pressure sensor mounted got the EGTs of course there's a boost and pressure or a you know the boost coming out of the turbo and the uh, temperature out of the turbo and pressure and temperature into the turbo and then over here we've got boost and temperature in the intake manifold itself so and then everything's over here together. It's the air mouse coming in. And this one cable is all it takes to go to the dash. So I was able to run it through the same hole the brake controller goes through. Got a suction cup deal on the window. See how it does over time, how well it sticks. If it stays stuck, key comes on, it comes on. And there we have it. At the ice, there's a little heat in the intake manifold because it's showing lower air density. You know, probably really sh shouldn't be because, like, intake air temperature air whatever it is in the over there into the air filter is pretty much the same I mean, it's 0.2 percent i guess was saying there or that's probably actually between the that's uh, intake air system delta density 
compressor delta density is 2.4 percent so yeah it's actually the uh the turbo is warm <laughs> i guess where it's coming from the compressor is showing where the heat is let's start it up and see what it does to be working so the salt gets off the roads where I can drive this thing in and I'll do some testing well that's going to do it for this one so I know not many people are interested in this data logging stuff but it's something I enjoy doing learning exploring testing so now I've got something I can get a baseline with I can do that and swap chargers on here and definitively tell how it performs compared to the other ones that are using the see the pants meter will have actual numbers because this thing can data log and it'll write the file and i'll be able to look back at how it performed driving up and down the road and see how it does so we'll find out in the future other than that uh learn i can't load the uh, video is over about 10 or 15 minutes to YouTube currently. My internet connection had a, a bar mill video that's close to a half hour long and uh, it uploaded for four days and got to 20% done and then it, it crashed. Uh, the buffer times I guess just too long. It's just like now we're done with this. So I'm not going to try and re-upload it for, at this point in time. I'm going to try and get a different internet service provider because my internet service has been degrading over the past two months pretty rapidly and it's gotten to the point where I just can't hardly even upload anything right now because it's so poor. Uh, download speeds are okay but they've got the upload choked down and just nothing where I just I can't upload anything. So this quick video is what you get and maybe someday the internet gods will be kind to us and I can upload some of the other videos and stuff I've been working on that are longer. So stick with me and thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing and I'll catch y'all later.